It's mystery box day. I just received this box filled with Dollar Tree goodies for the April mystery box challenge to create some DIY projects for you all. Hi there, I'm Melanie from Simple Main Pretty where I share budget DIYs, home decor, Cricut crafts, and if you love those too, hit subscribe below so we can be friends. My box came from Val at Auntie Cuckoo and I sent a box to Whitney at Whiskey and Wit. So before I open this box, a little bit more about the mystery box challenge. It was created by Courtney from Creative on the Cheap. Every other month she gathers talented YouTube creators to join in this challenge and all the videos are run in a loop. So after you watch this video, be sure to jump over to Whitney's channel to see what I sent her and her mystery box and then watch it the loop until you get back to Val's video. I see a lot of great Dollar Tree craft ideas and I hope you'll be inspired to create something too. So Val sent me two challenge items that I have to use and the twist in this challenge is that I can't use any glue or adhesives in one of the projects. So let's open the box up. It, look, it looks like it looks like a birthday present. So pretty. I love all the fun colors. And I have a card here from Val that says, Hi, Melanie. Happy mystery box. Please don't hate me. <laughs> I'm sure you will turn these lemons into lemonade. Happy crafting, heart Val. All right, let's see what she sent. Okay, the first thing I'm pulling out of the box is this gorgeous little ombre uh, vase. Um, oh, this is perfect for spring. I love it. What do you mean, hate you? <laughs> so far, so good. It's just the first item. Where do I get to the challenge items? All right, this is kind of wrapped weird, right? I think this is one of the challenge items. This is one of the challenge items, so we'll save that. Um, we've got some Dollar Tree rope. Wow, there's so many things I can do with this. I like it so far. Um, oh, this is so cute. Oh, I can't wait to use this. Let's see here. I've got a little picture frame, three and a half by five frame and some cute little chalkboard tags. These are always fun. There's so many things you can do with these. I'm getting excited. She sent me a roll of this whitewashed wood plank wallpaper, peel and stick wallpaper. And there is some faux leather. I could use this thing in my Cricut machine or I could just make something fun for y'all without Cricut. We'll see. We'll see. All right. Now we're ready for the challenge items. Challenge item number one. <laughs> oh, this wasn't too bad. Oh, I'm excited about this. I just love the spring and pink colors. You'll have to see what I sent Whitney in her box. Uh, this, so this looks like a solar powered flower light. Very fun. And challenge item number two. <laughs> Oh my goodness, what is this? <laughs> Hot Wheels tracks. <laughs> it's definitely a challenge, but out of everything she sent me, I'm extremely happy. I, I can't wait to see what I come up with for this. So I'm going to take a couple days and think of some craft projects using all of these items. And I'll come back in about two seconds to show you what I created. Hey, I'm back. I'm ready to start crafting. I've got some fun ideas. I'm going to make some Mother's Day crafts. So let's get to it. In this tutorial, I use the solar powered flower light, which was one of the challenge items, the chalkboard tags, the ombre vase, and the white wood wallpaper. I knew I wanted to use the chalkboard tags on the jar, but they were huge. So I used my heavy duty paper cutter to cut them down to size. 
Then I took some pink Dollar Tree rickrack, which I found during Easter, and I used it to tie the chalkboard tags around the vase. I used a Dollar Tree chalk marker to write memory jar on the tag. Next up, I used the solar flower and turned it into a pencil that will sit in the jar. I used my paper cutter to cut the pencil in half and I slid the leaves back on it to perfectly fit in the flower without glue. Don't worry, this isn't my project without glue. I cut just enough of the pencil so the flower rests on the edge of the vase. Now, I was trying to see if I could get away with no glue in this project, but ultimately I decided to use glue, but the pencil seems okay without glue. So for the memory jar to work, I needed paper to go inside the jar, so that's what the farmhouse paper is for. I used the paper cutter to cut strips of paper which I folded and placed inside the jar. What's really nice about this Mother's Day gift idea is that kids can write their favorite memories with mom and she can peel the back off and stick them wherever she wants or just keep them in the jar. I wasn't completely happy with the top of the flower here, so I ended up using hot glue and attached a Dollar Tree felt flower which I found in the store during Valentine's Day. This Mother's Day memory jar gift is a thoughtful and easy project that kids can make. In this next tutorial, I'm using the black faux leather, a small photo album, gold rub-on transfers, and chipboard. So this photo album is really flimsy, so to stiffen it up, I cut the chipboard down to size to fit in the front and on the back. I took the pink insert and I used it as a template to cut the chipboard, then placed the chipboard back inside the front and the back of the photo album. Then I took the black faux leather and wrapped it around the photo album. I decided to have it fold over on the inside on the front and back and cut it to size. Once again, I used my paper cutter to cut a perfectly straight edge off the leather. Once I had it cut to size, I plan to apply the transfer design first before gluing the leather to the album. I wanted to make sure the transfer adhered to the leather first. I used this I Heart Mom image and I just pressed down on the image so it would transfer and it turned out really nice. Then I used my glue gun to attach the leather cover to the photo album. You'll want to glue it all over to make sure it stays flat. I'm wearing pink finger protectors from Dollar Tree to avoid hot glue gun burns while pressing down on the material. I'm really happy with how this turned out, but I decided to use the rest of the rub-on transfers on the inside of the album to create a scrapbook style album. I think this will look so cute with some black and white photos inside and will make a wonderful gift for Mother's Day. This photo album looks high-end and is an easy DIY gift for mom. It's small enough to fit in a purse and she can take it out to show off her family pictures. In this tutorial, I used the arched wall decor and the rope from my mystery box. I also used some heart-shaped chalkboard tags, some rub-on transfers, and some white acrylic paint. I started by unraveling the rope because it was way too thick for the project I had in mind. I reduced the rope down to three individual pieces and then reduced each piece by half again. Then I tied the rope to the heart shape to make sure it was small enough for that hole. I painted over the oval piece on the front and while that was drying, I used my drill with a large drill bit to drill holes into the bottom of the arch decor piece. Now, if you can't tell what I'm making at this point, it's a family tree with my mom's kids and her grandkids. My mom had six kids, so I'm drilling six holes into the bottom of this arch. I used a pencil to mark where I wanted to drill the holes, and then I placed the arch on the edge of my paper cutter as a ledge while I drilled down. 
This is plastic, so it was fairly simple using a basic power drill. I applied a second coat of paint to the oval piece, and while that was drying, I started to string the chalkboard heart tags onto the holes. This was actually the most time consuming part of this craft because I had so many to do. I think it would have been faster with different rope or string. Unfortunately, I'm working with what I got in this mystery box, so it's not too bad. Once I had all of the heart tags for the kids on there, it was time to drill a hole in the bottom of each heart to add the grandkid heart tags. I drilled a hole using the same method as the arch into the tags and added each grandkid tag using the same rope. I used the same rope from the first grandkid tag to tie on the second grandkid tag to simplify things. After that, the paint was dry enough to apply the rub on transfer, so I started by cutting out some green floral transfer images and the word family. Then I applied each transfer by pressing down on the images. This is where I ran into a little issue since I painted the oval, the transfers were not applying that well over the paint. I had to play around with it and ended up using a marker and colored pencils to finish the drawing design. Then I added the names on the front of each heart. I don't have the best handwriting, so I used a pencil before using a white gel pen. You could also use a chalkboard marker. I didn't show all of my family names for privacy purposes, but you get the idea. A few notes about this project is you can include spouses, although I didn't on this version and you can write the spouse's name on the back of each heart or write birthdays on the back of each heart. I think my mom will enjoy this gift for Mother's Day and will love looking at it and being reminded that she helped create this wonderful family. And FYI, this was the twist project that I completed without using any glue or adhesives. In this tutorial, I used the small picture frame, the race car tracks challenge item, galvanized alphabet letters, black spray paint, and hot glue. So I removed the metal plaque and discarded it, and then I cut the race tracks to fit on the frame using my paper cutter. I'm sure you can see where this project is going. Once I had the tracks cut, I printed a copy of my daughter's baby footprints, and yes, I was a little emotional looking at how little her feet were now that she's almost 13. I used some wood filler to fill in those holes, then I spray painted the tracks black and let them dry. While they were drying, I cut the footprints to fit inside the frame. I ended up removing the stand off the back to get this to work, but I reattached it by hammering it in place. Then I took some galvanized letters to spell mommy and glued them to the front of the frame. Another idea is to spell out the baby's name and glue it to the front. Once the tracks were dry, I used my hot glue gun to attach them to the back of the frame. All was going smoothly until that stand got in the way, so I had to remove it once again and then reattach it. All in all, I think this sentimental Mother's Day frame gift turned out adorable, and you'd never know those are toy racetracks on the back. Well, it's time for me to wrap up this video. If you are on a tight budget for Mother's Day, you might want to try these DIY Mother's Day crafts, which only take a few dollars to create and you don't need many special tools or materials. You can create lovely gifts, perfect for the mom figure in your life using items found at Dollar Tree. Let me know in the comments which one was your favorite. And don't forget to jump over to Whitney's channel to see what I sent her in her mystery box. And be sure to watch the loop until you get back to Val's video. That was it, guys. That was a lot of fun. I can't wait for my next mystery box challenge. If you enjoyed these tutorials, be sure to subscribe to my channel so you can see more like this. And check out SimpleMadePretty.com for some more fun craft ideas. Bye!